Well, let me, let me follow up then. Uh, someone asks, um, if you took NASA out of the equation, in the sense of being uh, responsible or important for your future business. Is there enough private satellite and other government payload business to keep you going if for some reason NASA wasn't in the picture? Or is that a concern at all? Um, yeah, the, well, so, certainly NASA is our, is, is our largest customer and our most important customer. Um, but if you look at our launch manifest, we have over 30 uh, Falcon 9 um, missions under contract. Uh, 13 of those are with NASA. so. Um, so effectively, we've got maybe about 40% or so of our, of our business with the government. Uh, but then if you consider, let, let's say you made pencils, um, well, about 40% of your business would be with the government. Mm -hmm. So it's not, uh, that's not an unreasonable number. Um. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, here, we're getting to the workforce <laughs> issue. Uh, Someone uh, writes in the audience today, my son, not me, is a, is a mission controller at Houston's Johnson Space Center, which obviously uh, is relevant to the future of your business as well. Many of his friends with the shuttle program have been let go and are interviewing via video for jobs with your company. Any suggestions on what you're looking for? <laughs> sure. Well, um, uh, the, you know, if you look at the amount of money that is allocated to commercial space um, relative to the overall NASA budget, you'll see it's a it's a pretty small number. Um, the uh, you know it, it, in, in sort of last last fiscal year it was about three hundred million dollars, but that was split over four companies. Um, so we we got about seventy five, I think, or something like that. So um, it, it, that's I guess about half a percent of the NASA budget. Um, so so it's important to bear in mind that. that We'd love to hire a lot more people than we currently hire, but we, we, we can't, also can't run out of money and die. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so we can only hire a few people. In terms of what, um, what characteristics we look for, we generally um, we're quite you know, engineering-centric. So we're big fans of what have people done from a hardcore engineering standpoint. You know, um, yeah, what, what, what type of engineering problems have they solved, how they solve them, um, and um, well, you know, we're sort of less interested if, if it's sort of been a more of a paper-oriented uh, role that they've had, because you know, we try to, try to minimize that at SpaceX. So, uh, Are you more demanding an employer than NASA would have been? Well, um, that's a tough question to answer. Um, Give it a I, shot. <laughs> I think... Uh, I think we're probably more demanding. I mean, I guess, you know, NASA is a large organization, so I think the level of demand that people face in different parts of NASA varies considerably. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that there are parts of NASA where, which are just as demanding, uh, maybe more demanding than SpaceX. But, but, but SpaceX is an extremely demanding organization, and we expect people to work super hard and, um, and be very good at their job.